it's your girl T, and I want to go ahead and shout out VH1 Access. He sent me this crazy story that's coming out of uh, Minnesota. Minnesota Madness is back in the damn news. So what happened is that there's this pastor named Edward Nathaniel III, and basically he's a Minnesota bus driver, and he was fired recently because he kept holding prayer sessions, kept preaching the kids on his school bus. So it's causing a lot of controversy here in the Twin Cities. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a news clip, and I will come back with the rest of my A commentary. local pastor who worked as a bus driver says he was fired because he prayed with students on his bus. George Nathaniel III says that children aboard his bus had a choice to engage in prayer or not. But as Reg Chapman shows us, after a warning from the company that hired him, he was terminated last week. Now I'm a preacher. And that's what I do. George Nathaniel III is a pastor of a church in Minneapolis, as well as a bus driver for Durham School Services. He lost his job as a bus driver last week over complaints of religious materials on the bus. I asked the students, would they like to pray? And if they like to pray, then they can pray. They can lead prayer themselves. And then I would pray. Nathaniel says never was anyone forced to do anything against their will. Uh, a couple of routes, I had children that chose not to pray. So that was fine. Nathaniel uh, admits so he we, was told by the bus company to stop what he was doing. The company said, you know, they gave me a written warning that you cannot uh, pray on a bus. The company changed his bus route. This time, Nathaniel said he spoke with parents about his praying with kids on the bus. No parent complained to me personally. So I just heard it from the district. But in terms of the First Amendment, uh, what he was doing violated the First Amendment, in, in my opinion. ACLU um, legal director Teresa and, Nelson uh, says Nathaniel uh, should not have been having prayer on a public school bus. The school bus is a captive audience. Uh, when he's driving the school bus, he is acting as a school official, and he does not have the right to proselytize or to promote religion in that context. They're trying to take away every right that the Christians has to express our Christian belief in this supposed to have been Christian nation. Nathaniel says he wants to fight for prayer on school buses, but there are those who believe his fight will be in vain. He has First Amendment rights to pray. He's got a right to his own religion, but there is no constitutional right for school officials to pray with a captive audience of students. Durham School Services says it is company policy not to discuss individual employment decisions in the media, but added that the company does not have a specific policy on the subject of prayer. Nathaniel is looking for other clergy to join his cause. Okay, so you guys just watched the news clip, and I just thank God that he didn't let Jesus take the wheel. First of all, folks, just do the most. Sir, all they ask you to do is drive the bus. Make sure the kids get to school safe and make sure they get home safe. It is not your job to evangelicalize people. It's not your job to preach to people. It's not your job to lead all these kids in prayer. What people don't realize, a lot of folks are saying, well, you know, what's the big deal? He's just trying to pray, you know, for them. He's trying to keep them safe. What folks don't realize is that Minnesota has a huge Muslim population. And from what I heard, the kids on this bus were Somalian kids. They were Muslim Somalian kids. And he's basically trying to convert a lot of these Islamic kids to Christianity. And when he made the comment in his news clip that this is a Christian country, you can't tell me he wasn't preaching to these kids. He can say that he was just praying to them, but for him to say this is a Christian country lets me know that he was also preaching to these kids. And these kids ended up telling their parents. And he was also warned. He was written up and he was told not to do it anymore. He chose to keep on doing it. Well, well, that's what happens when you go against the rules of your company. You get fired. So I don't understand why he's upset or why he's mad. If he wants to pray, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with praying. He can pray to himself. He can pray in his heart. There's nothing wrong with him praying before the kids get on the bus. But to hold a prayer session and to force, you know, to ask kids to pray or to preach to kids, I don't think that's cool because if this was a Muslim bus driver and he decides to, you know, start doing the salat and start, you know, doing the Muslim prayer and everything else and making kids, you know, face method and start praying, it would be an outrage. People would be upset if this was a Muslim bus driver forcing kids to do salat on the bus, forcing Christian kids to do a Muslim prayer. It would not fly. If this was an atheist talking about, you know, there is no God and F your God, it would not fly. Folks would be upset. You cannot mix religion with school, point blank, regardless if it's in the school or on the school bus. You know, and I understand a lot of Christians feel like, well, that's what's wrong with the schools today because they took prayer out the schools. Now there's all these shootings. Now there's all this extra stuff. There's all these kids just out of control. I understand that. 
But at the end of the day, that's the rules. And if the rules are there's no religion in schools and there's just no religions, there's not too much you can do about that. You know, do I think that prayer is bad? Hell no. You know, prayer can be a very peaceful thing. There's nothing wrong with praying. There's nothing wrong with being a Christian. There's nothing wrong with being a Muslim. But you cannot force your religion or your ideology on anybody else. You know, we have to have respect for everybody's religion. You know, and I feel like that's what it was is the fact that he was trying to convert these Somalian kids into, you know, Christianity, and that's not fair. You know, we have a huge Muslim population, and we have to respect everybody's religion, everybody's culture. Unfortunately, he just needs to understand that nowadays we live in a society where you cannot pray, you know what I'm saying, to people. You can't force people into prayer. You can't preach to folks. Folks ain't trying to hear that, you know. It's sad, but it's just the way of the world. You know, should he been fired for that? Well, being that they warned him, and he was written up, and he was told not to do it, and he still disobeyed, I can't be mad that he was fired for that. You know, hopefully he'll be able to find another job. But he seems like a good dude. He seems like a real good man. And he's really proud of his religion. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is when you try and force that onto other people. So let me know your thoughts on the entire situation. Do you think he was wrong for trying to force his prayer and religion onto the kids on the school bus? Or do you think that the bus and the school district are overreacting? Or do you think that people just need to keep prayer out of schools and off the buses? So let me know your thoughts on the entire situation. All right. Deuces.